Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Burney, a race number five at Churchill Downs on Breeders' Cup Saturday is the Grade 1 Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Let's take a look at this field. They're running for a million dollars. It is a one-turn mile at Churchill Downs, again carded as race number five. Your favorite, Matt, on the outside. It's the unbeaten number 10 Catalina Cruiser, a perfect four for four in his career. Three of those races have resulted in triple-digit buyers, and he was just dominant last time out in the Grade 2 Pat O'Brien stakes and at first glance that race looked weak but it was nice to see Battle of Midway the runner-up at least return to a semblance of form last weekend in Southern California. Yeah certainly and I, I mean really the, the thing with Catalina Cruiser he's yet to be challenged in any one of his four lifetime starts and, and my sort of rationale for knocking him or trying to be against him coming into this race was well he's probably gonna have to work a heck of a lot harder and then you saw the number of cross entries for this race and ultimately what this field developed into and then you couple it with the post position draw, breaking from the far outside. Uh, he, he can either clear off to the front or he can sit just off of a horse like Trigger Warning. I think he's going to work out another perfect trip. And you know what? I, I wonder if you just get to a certain point and you go, you know, that old adage that good horses make good trips. Maybe that's what we're talking about with a horse like this. I still think he's going to have to work hard on Saturday, but I think he's way the horse to beat. Looks like he's tailor-made for the one-turn mile configuration. He's won at six, he's won at seven, he's won around a two-turn mile in a 16th. John Sadler does well off slight breaks. We haven't seen this horse between 61 and 180 days, but a bullet workout on October 14th indicates he might be ready to rumble. We'll take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector. You mentioned that this is a horse that can kind of make his own trip. He has natural speed. Time form U.S. believes that he can clear to the early top, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case, although if a horse like the number two trigger warning decided that he wanted to go to the front, I think the Catalina Cruiser would be very happy sitting second. That's kind of the way that I drew it up, actually, when I went through the race. I figured trigger warning. I'm a big fan of his. I think he's shown speed in other races and breaking as far down to the inside as he is. I think they're going to send, and if he's fast enough to clear off, then they're going to be content Catalina Cruiser and company sitting just off. And if for some reason he's not fast enough and Catalina Cruiser wants to go, go on with it. City of Light, the number one's the second choice on the morning line at 5-2. to two. Coming into this race off five consecutive triple-digit buyer speed figures. He's been the only horse that could solve Accelerate in 2018, beating him in the Oaklawn Handicap at a mile and an eighth. But you can argue that Shorter is better and that the one-turn mile is very good for him. Your thoughts on his second-place finish in the Grade 1 Forgo, his most recent start as the favorite. It was a race in which he was wide. The winner, Whitmore, shot up the rail. So City of Light was affected, perhaps, by that ground loss. And you could argue the rail was also the place to be that day. It was a fine effort from him. It was, it was more for me a matter of what he did and how he did it that I didn't necessarily love. He was very late with the lead change. This is a horse that's been just professional throughout his entire career. But you see that late lead change on the heels of him having foot problems and keeping in mind that they had called an audible. He was supposed to run in the Whitney. They had to wait and give him more time. Showed up and he ran the forego. Um, I don't know if I to totally agree with the inside being the place to be that day on forego day. I kind of felt like it was relatively fair. And if he was good enough, he should have been able to go on. But at the same time, Whitmore had the dream trip up the inside. So I don't want to hold that against City of Light. It's just you couple the foot problems with one race since the end of May. I just don't know that I want him at 5-2. to two. What kind of trip do you envision Javier giving City of Light? I mean, he's down towards the inside. They may not want to be in behind horses here. This horse did show enough speed to wire the Malibu last year as a three-year-old. Is there a scenario where Javier puts City of Light on the, on the lead? You know, I think there is a chance that that's possible down on the inside. I almost feel like they would be better off trying to have trigger worn and go off and clear and hope that you can just get over heels and get out into that sort of two path. And I realize there's a lot that needs to happen in a short amount of time for a perfect situation like that. I think that would be ideal for them. Um, but I do wonder if the, you're, you're right. He, he's shown big speed in the past, and I wonder if just in order to try to establish some sort of early position. Maybe they use him out of the gate a little bit. Keep in mind that shoot at Churchill Downs, there is going to be an opening at a certain point when they go out of there. And uh, I don't know that you necessarily want to be hemmed in down on the inside. The six seeking the soul won the local prep for this. The grade three ACAC, -ac, also a one-turn mile, was coming on the heels of a disappointing performance in the Woodward. Although if you want to argue that he was too close to that fast pace in the Woodward, fine. To me, it was a bit of a disappointing performance. I thought the ACAC -ac was a lot better. And this horse just seems to love Churchill Downs. We saw him with his coming out party, winning the Clark handicap last year at a mile and an eighth at Churchill. And although maybe the outside was where you wanted to be at Churchill on ACAC -ac day, I think Seeking the Soul overcame a slow pace with a good solid run, and I think he's just now getting into form. He got a late start this year. 
Yeah, I agree with you. And considering the, the pace was very, very slow in that race at Churchill, the ACAC most recently, and he was able to overcome that. I thought both he and Giant Expectations, we'll talk about in a little bit, I thought they both ran just fine. Uh, seeking the soul, maybe this has actually been his bread and butter all along, sort of these one-turn miles. Um, I think he's very logical in here. I think if you're looking to beat Catalina Cruz or City of Light, uh, a very logical alternative is this horse. Giant Expectations, I think they got ambitious after he won the San Antonio, and the San Antonio kind of had that look of a funny race about it, opening day of the Santa Anita winter meeting where uh, he was just able to get to the lead, collected, who was the big favorite coming off the Breeders' Cup, just showed no speed whatsoever. Giant Expectations walked the dog and was able to beat Accelerate. They tried the Pegasus World Cup. He wasn't ready for that. They tried the big cap. He wasn't ready for a mile and a quarter. I like that they gave him time. They brought him back in the ACAC. And you mentioned why he's a kind of horse you might want to be interested in. He probably wasn't cranked up 100% for the ACAC. He didn't break. He came with a mid-move. He looked a little tired. He'll probably be better on Saturday. The question is, is he good enough? Yeah, I, I certainly think you're going to get a better version of him. But really, you strip that 106 in the San Antonio away from him. I guess he's got one race that makes him a fringe contender, and that's that Pat O'Brien from 2017. Uh, I think he does take a step forward here. He would appreciate a little bit of pace signed on, so he would probably be a beneficiary of someone like a trigger warning being sent or a city of light being aggressively ridden from the inside to go and kind of push the issue early on. I, I, I think he's going to run better. I don't know that he's going to be good enough to win. Awesome slew likes Churchill Downs, who won the 2017 ACAC. I beat a neck in the Churchill Downs stakes earlier this year, going seven furlongs. And if you believe the inside was not the place to be last time out in the ACAC, well, that's where he was. And he was buried in behind horses, turning into the stretch. He finished evenly. There are going to be some folks that now see four consecutive sub-triple-digit buyer speed figures and say, listen, Awesome Slew may not be the same horse that he was last year, but I think you give this horse a fair pace. He's going to come with a run, especially at Churchill Downs. You know, I was really interested in taking a look at him and trying to make a case for him. And I can see the the straightforward case of saying, he gets back here, he's a one-turn miler, he's going to get a little bit more pace than he got in that ACAC, and he should come with a run. I just don't think he's quite the same here as a five-year-old as he was as a four-year-old. If he had that four-year-old form coming into this, or even that form that he had going into the cart or coming out of that dirt mile last year, I kind of feel like that would be an interesting spot. I just don't think he's still got it. First time older horses for the seven Firenze Fire, and this one-turn mile hits him right between the eyes. He won the grade one Champagne, he won the Jerome, he won the Dwyer all around one turn miles. He's coming into this race sharp off a win in the grade three Gallant Bob, a race in which he was on his way to, to winning and the runner-up tried to bite him on the neck in mid-stretch. <laughs> and Frenze Fire, to his credit, was nonplussed. He kept right on going and won that race with a 98 buyer. I like his tactical speed. If you don't think the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile is as strong this year as it's been in previous races or that the favorites have holes, this horse could easily step up and run a big one and win it. Yeah, he fits in here very well. I agree. I think this one-turn mile, this is a better spot for him than the sprint, which was the alternative. Three for four at the distance. I, I think he's going to be a little bit more forwardly placed. I like the fact that he showed that earlier speed that he had in that gallant bob most recently, as opposed to coming from a little bit farther off of it. Uh, I think he makes a lot of sense in a spot like this. I don't know what you're going to get for a price. He's six to one on the morning line. I could see people being enticed for him as the third choice in here in that five to one range. But um, look, I still think that's probably a pretty square number. Not sure he's going to win this race, but part of me is rooting for Bravazzo because he's simply a throwback horse for Wayne Lucas. He competed in all three legs of the Triple Crown. Then he ran second in the Haskell, third in the Travers, before throwing in a rare dud in the Pennsylvania Derby. They're cutting him back to a one-turn mile. He probably has to run his best race. Uh, I wonder if maybe in start number 10, though, he's feeling the effects of a long, hard campaign. Yeah, it's possible. I, I like Bravazzo. I think he's honest. I personally think he's better going longer than he is shorter. But if you believe the just raw numbers, he's two for three going a mile, and he's three for three in the money. So maybe this is actually what he's wanted all along. It'll be interesting to see where he's positioned on the racetrack throughout as well. I think Seven Trumpets is a horse you want to keep an eye on if he goes off around 20 to 1 at post time. This horse is three for three at Churchill Downs. He's making his third start of the form cycle here, coming off two of his career best buyer speed figure efforts. And he had an issue in the gallant bob. He didn't really break that day. He tried to rush into contention. All things considered, I thought it was a decent third place finish. And that six might have been a little uh, short for him. I like him at this longer distance. I mean, he's going to have to face older horses, but he's okay. And look, he's a perfect three for three at Churchill Downs as well. I don't think you can overstate that. I think he fits in here very well. 
How about Isotherm, the number three? You know he's one of my favorites. I've always thought maybe he's a little bit class compromised. The uh, Brubaker, I thought he was the best horse when he was wide every step of the way against Dabster. And he backed that race up in the awesome again, running a surprising third behind Accelerate and West Coast, two of the favorites in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Now, you could obviously look at the awesome again and say, well, if Isotherm is that close, maybe Accelerate and West Coast aren't coming into the Classic the right way. Or you're saying Phil D'Amato's got Isotherm seeing dead red, and I, I like him cutting back to a one turn mile i was going to say i mean you could look take that positive spin and say even if you think that those top two in the classic aren't going in in the perfect form isotherm's form coming out of that race fits in here very very well slightly shorter distance shows that he's got a little bit of early speed I hey, look 20 to 1 you could do worse and i know you're a fan of trigger warning you've been waiting for him to cut back in distance there's a chance that he could make the pace in here or at least be close would you be using him underneath Absolutely. I picked him third. I think there's a real scenario where, again, if he goes out there and Catalina Cruiser sits just off, perhaps this thing doesn't materialize from a pace standpoint. And again, this horse at a shorter distance, I think this is what he's wanted all along. I think he's very interesting underneath at a big price. You picked trigger warning third. Let's see who you picked on top in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. We are in agreement. We're both going with Catalina Cruiser. We both, I think, tried to beat him. But I think, you know, he's the fastest horse in the race. He might end up getting the best trip, either on the lead or stalking on the outside. This is the big class question for him as he steps up into a grade one for the first time. But he certainly has shown uncommon talent in his first four races. Uh, Catalina Cruiser will be my top pick as well. Give me numbers. Yeah, 10, 6, 2, and 1. And the one other thing that I suppose you can throw out there for Catalina Cruiser as a question is first time shipping. And oh, that's yeah. going to be a big thing for him to overcome. If he if he can do it, then look, he is the bee's knees and he fits in here and he's the best of the best. But at the same time, until they do it, you never know. He's going to be a short price. I wouldn't fault anyone trying to beat him, but I just think he's going to work out a perfect trip in here. I'm going 10 one, six, seven. I'm using Catalina Cruiser uh, in the multis. I'm also going to use Seeking the Soul. I think City of Light to me is more of an underneath kind of horse at a, at a relatively short price. I might try to beat him uh, in the multis. Maybe I would use him as a backup. 10 one, six, seven for me in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Race number five at Churchill Downs on Breeders' Cup Saturday. Good luck.